y'all. Welcome to your end of September 2020 General Tarot Update. It's Raina here. Okay, so let's see what we got. <laughs> oh, one's fire. Get that fire going. An additional card. Okay. All right. The heart of the matter is the Four of Wands. This can be a new home. This can be a, a marriage situation. This is the happy home. This is Wands energy. You're Wands, so is Aries and Sag. So how do fire signs approach love? I'm a Sag. We approach it like big kids. We're not uh, taking, we, we might take love seriously, but we don't have to make it into something that is solemn. You know, we can have fun with it. God, I sounded like so, like I... From that movie Fargo, Salam. Um, in the past tense, in the past position, I said past tense, um, the Knight of Cups can be this knight in shining armor. The perfect gentleman, if, if um, that is uh, applicable to your situation. Gender is typically applied to court cards but i have seen decks that kind of flaunt those rules so you know the perfect partner who woos you who comes across as romantic and um so so far so good right well the higher message is the ten of wands this is the card if even if you don't know anything about tarot meanings what is the first thing that you see when you see this card do you see this person's body language or body movements of hunching over somebody is carrying this big load this can relate to uh having a lot on your plate okay now wants can be about ambition and definitely i will say something that um Leos can be workaholics. There's no question about that. You are very um, career-oriented, success-oriented. So that could be as the spiritual message that your ambition is impacting your relationship, that you have this thing. Don't, you know, these cards are both in the upright position, the Knight of Cups and, and the um, Four of Wands. Don't throw away, unintentionally throw away, a good thing because of your ambition. Because sometimes ambition can be associated with ego, that somebody wants the glory. Remember that um, what we're doing, if you are a spiritual person, ultimately what we're doing to me is all about, um, you know, the the spiritual uh, service that we're rendering to other people. To me, that's ultimately what it's all about. So all these other things are kind of like, to me, window dressing and, and not as important, you know, the glory of it, um, of, you know, of, of being a success in the world is to me secondary to being of service, selfless service to others. Okay. The other possibility here is that somebody has presented themselves as a knight in shining armor and they're anything but, and they sucked you into a marriage or, you know, domestic partnership, and you're doing all of the heavy lifting in the relationship and you feel that they're not really engaged in it 
maybe they weren't trying to be deceptive, but it's like they're afraid of intimacy. So they pull back. They are always with their friends with uh, cups. If this is a, a water sign individual and can't, no, not cancer. Um, Scorpio is the water sign that Leos are attracted to like bees to honey. But the other, I think I did a compatibility um, podcast for that. You can, you know, an audio, you can check my channel if you are with a Scorpio and see what I said about that because I go in greater depth. But the other water signs are Pisces and Cancer. And um, they may um, pull back, especially if you're a female Leo with a water sign male because water sign males, even though they're emotional, they're supposed to be emotional, they have to me in my experience and how I feel about them is that there's a macho streak in them that prevents them from actually being forthright with their emotions. They can be, you can still be emotional and, and keep your emotions to yourself. I mean, keep your, uh, and, and not share how you feel, you know, Scorpios are masters at this. And Leos, this is going to drive you crazy because you really are very uh, emotive um, in an open way, uh, being a masculine sign. So that that can create a little bit of, um, you know, conflict in that sense. But whatever's going on, you might be the one who is doing most of it. If um, there's some kind of a... Um, I was thinking even of buying a new home and somebody made you this great offer for this home, but it's turning out to be more than you can. It's turning out to be a bit off more than you can chew with this because perhaps the offer was because it was a fixer upper and you were seeing the, the, you know, the final version of it, but you didn't realize how much work would go into it or if it's your dream home how much money you know how how um long hours you have to work to afford it things like that what crosses you is the queen of wands this is the oh my gosh um i'm i'm gonna stop saying this but i'm not gonna stop saying it right now i see this woman as a leo because she has a, a sunflower and you're ruled by the sun. Also because she is royalty. I think of Leo as royalty. It's a, this is supposed to be a Sagittarius woman. Now, the reason I said, oh boy, is in the challenge position, this person can be a piece of work. Is this you, Leo? Are you acting like a diva for some reason? Maybe it's being stressed out. Are you, do you feel like you have so much going on that you can't be your usual warm, generous self? And the opposite of that is somebody who is very, um, like a petty tyrant, uh, trying to control others because you feel out of control by a situation. Um, I think that this could be your boss and this person may be the one that is making you work so hard. And they're out of control. That's why they're in the challenge position. What can you do about it? Well, um, you may say, but I just bought a new home and what am I supposed to do? Um, <laughs> that's something that you have to decide what you know your peace of mind is worth. If this is, if you admit to being like this woman and you haven't been as nice as you, you usually are, uh, maybe because you've been working long hours, admit that to your partner. Don't try to act as if you're um, blameless. Um, just, be, just be forthright and, and apologize. And have the humility to apologize for it. Explain why you've been that way. Um, you know, one thing that I meant to touch upon 
if the person that you were with seems like they have turned on you, maybe they were the knight in shining armor and then they turned into someone who um, either is, you know, not sensitive to your needs or they are inattentive or maybe they are the ten of wands. Maybe they are a workaholic and they can't give you attention. The response to that is not to become like the queen of wands in reverse and become demanding, become um, controlling or anything like that. Actually, that's when you soften even more so. When I was talking about um, relationships between water signs and, you know, male and, and a fire sign female, one of the reasons I say this is because there can be a, a feeling if you're more successful than this person, if you have, make more money, whatever, that they feel um, not good about themselves and they use that as a, 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 a reason Maybe they're not even, not on the conscious level to kind of um, cut you down to size. But you can't take the bait and, and sink to that level. The Queen of Wands in reverse is a drama queen. So if you're not getting attention and you just become more and more overbearing, then you become exactly what they already see you as. Sometimes... Um, I feel like in the male-female dynamic, and I'm talking about older people more than maybe people in their 20s or even 30s, but um, sometimes the man may see the woman as overbearing simply because she is not dependent on him. And that's his problem, but you don't have to exacerbate it with more attitude, with more like aggression. Because then you actually make his point for him. The more that we can understand another person's um, motivations and put ourselves in their shoes, even if we feel like this isn't fair, that this person is like this, I think the better off it'll be and you can salvage the relationship. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, you know, it, it takes two. But, you know, trying like, like if somebody is not being emotionally uh, open with you. It is very common for women, not just Leos. I don't want to pick on Leos, but uh, women in general. I've had this in my own relationship uh, with somebody who is typically pretty open, but sometimes I'll sense things and I'll say, are you okay? And he will, you know, sometimes he'll say, I already told you I was. And then later on he'll admit, oh, well, I was, you know, upset about this or that. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me? And he goes, well, I didn't know. <laughs> That's how men can be. So we have to pull back. We cannot double down and become more and more aggressive. But we have to give somebody their emotional space. And we have to also, um, you know, be gentle about it. Because as fire energy, we're very aggressive. Even those of us who are women, we're very like we want to just like bring it on. And we can't in some cases. Okay, what's coming in is the six of pentacles. This is a card of getting what you're worth. You see the scales. And yes, because this is pentacles, we could be talking about actual um, monetary uh, fair exchange. So if you're being, you know, worked like a dog in the workplace, at least they can pay you extra, right? For all of that. Uh, the Ten of Wands can be even like risking burnout. If this is in a relationship, this give and take in a relationship, um, it might kind of have to come on your part where you have to be the one who is um, realizing that you are not investing enough in the relationship time-wise. And that you're too involved with other things. And that that is going to um, ultimately doom the relationship if you're not careful because, um, the other person, uh, may feel neglected. So, it, it, you know, obviously there's always these nuances, these balance issues of somebody that's expecting too much and, 
you know, giving too little, but I'm just saying in general, that could be what, what's going on. And the outcome, I did pick an additional card. This one is not too bad. Um, it is another fire energy, but um, it's the five of wands, which can indicate conflict. Now, conflict, the reason I don't like it is because it's not because I'm afraid of conflict and I don't, I think it's like a horrific situation. And this is also the card of competition, but it can be friendly competition. It doesn't have to be toxic. It could be like um, everybody is just, um, you know, you're in a workplace where everybody is like inspired by everybody else to, you know, bring their A game. But if this is like a relationship issue, you may have to clear the air and it's, it might be a bit loud. It might be something where the other person um, just refuses to deal with it because that's just how they have approached life. And then they start to get angry because you're not going to let it go. Um... And same thing with the workplace. If You know, with the Six of Pentacles, I should have said, too, that it can be advice. And it could be like, you need to ask for fairness in this work, work exchange, work money exchange. Maybe you are getting the short end of the stick. And um, yes. It might stir up some something from somebody that doesn't want to um, give you what you want because they think that they are the, the in charge. You know, if this Queen of Wands in reverse is the person who is the culprit, they might think, I don't have to do anything, you know. I tell you what to do. You don't tell me what to do. And in those situations that can create a bit of conflict because you're, um, you might be demanding just basic dignity. You're not, you might say, I'm not asking for the moon. I just am asking for you to respect, you know, what I'm all about. And, and so there might be pushback. The outcome is the Four of Cups. This is a card you can see of somebody giving an offer. Isn't that funny? So I have the Knight of Cups, somebody offering somebody love. Now we have the Four of Cups, somebody being offered love, but not that impressed by it. Why? It can be that the person knows what the truth is of the situation. Perhaps you got involved with somebody as a rebound. You might have even married them very quickly because the person that you loved was with somebody else. And it was not even, you weren't even, you know, thinking that deeply about it. You just did it. But you knew that you were doing it um in a reactionary way. Deep down inside, you may have known that. And um, so what I see with this card is that you may be pinpointing where everything has gone wrong. And that has, you know, a lot, you know, coming on the heels of the five of wands, all of this drama, all of this whatever is going on, could simply be a lot of yelling about something that is already um, played out, so to speak. I, th I think I got for your mid-month reading already gone. And so this is like an extent, uh, extension of that in a sense. I'm going to pick one more card just because I just want to get something. Hmm, interesting. The Hierophant is actually connected to Taurus. So another fixed sign. So is that somebody that's coming into your life? Maybe they're already around you. And that gives you the 
Well, I was going to say that could be sparks flying because the five of wands can be, you know, clashing. But th that's true for two, two signs like Leo and, and uh, Taurus growing up like that. <laughs> and um, what did I do with that card? I just took, put it back in the deck. Um, the, the Hierophant is a card also of the spiritual of looking at something beyond just um, the mundane version of life, philosophical. So even if something seems like it's not working out, like the Four of, Wands, uh, of Cups suggests, this may be part of your spiritual awakening when you realize that you can't fix your... Um, spiritual life with relationships that that's it's, you know relationships are like icing on the cake but they're not a refuge from you know all of the uh, things that you need to grow with in your life in your on your spiritual journey the hierophant is really a great card or if we look at it in terms of that spiritual perspective of always framing things at the highest level. I do this just by instinct. And if this is not how you operate, when you become like this, it can make things a lot easier. Some people might say, oh, that's just a way to kind of escape reality or something like that. But I see it as the ultimate reality. Because when we get so caught up in worldly situations, including relationships, and some relationships are more worldly than others, and maybe that's the thing. Maybe you've been looking for a spiritual relationship because of your own um, self-growth and wanting somebody that mirrors that. So um, perhaps that is uh, going to be the next part of uh, your life and and the same thing applies to the work environment maybe you are really ready for a new type of career one that nourishes you spiritually not depletes from you that way i don't know this is just one snapshot in time so i hope you enjoyed it leo if you'd like a personal relation <laughs> if you'd like a personal relationship with me uh, you can contact me if, you, if you'd like a personal reading. Uh, the link is below. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.